السلام عليكم اسعد مساءكم جميعا and welcome to our uh, today's workshop which is going to be about uh, how to write compare and contrast essay uh, today's workshop is going to be presented by uh, Mrs. Rabia Khan and thank you Mrs. Rabia for presenting this workshop and uh, the floor is yours you may start now Thank you very much uh, for introducing me. So nice of you. And welcome to the session, everyone. Uh, I hope today's session will go smoothly and fruitfully. So today we are going to talk about compare and contrast essay writing. Um, and actually, in your uh, career as a student, uh, you will counter many different kinds of writing. And one of the most common is comparison and contrast essay. So let's talk about it. So, okay. okay, let's move forward, first slide. So today's outline is what is compare and contrast essay? We will talk about it and we will try to analyze, right? Second one is what is the purpose of compar comparison and contrast? How to prepare to write a comparison and contrast essay? So we will talk about some technicalities, how to organize a comparison and contrast essay, what are the rules of thumb with comparison and contrast essay, how and when to use the indicators. So the first question is, what is compare, compare and contrast essay? So as uh, we mentioned before, during your career, it is the most common form of essay that we deal with, in which we focus uh, on the ways in which certain ideas, certain things, certain objects, people, we compare them or we contrast them, whether they are similar or they are different, right? And when you are assigned such kind of an essay, and in instructors are in encouraging you to make connection between some ideas some qualities uh, and texts, okay? And they engage you in critical thinking process, right? So in comparison and contrast essay, you talk about similarities and dissimilarities between two items. Uh, and it is concerned with evaluating differences and similarities between given items or topics. And it is just not mere a comparison. The essay requires thorough evaluation and analysis supported by reliable data. Right. So as when we talk about teacher encourage, encourage you to do the critical thinking process and you generate ideas and you analyze the qualities and and prospects of certain kind of things that you are comparing. Right. So basically you reflect upon the similarities and differences. And then after that, you gain a deeper understanding of the items you're comparing and their relationship to each other, which is most important about that. So compare and contrast essay is a very common pattern in essay writing. Also, it is most common essay test questions, right? So we often compare and contrast to buildings, to cities, shopping malls, maybe your favorite job, favorite subject, favorite food. Uh, so this, this is like common questions that you receive when you are in foundation year, or maybe they are developed further, like for example, compare two books, compare two writers, uh, and likewise. Let's move on to our next slide. What is the purpose of compare and contrast essay? So contrast draw out uh, differences between two subjects, right? So when we talk about contrasts, so that means you are talking about the differences between the said objects or subjects, right? Comparison, on the other hand, it outlines both similarities and differences between the two subjects, right? Um, they are similar in certain way, they are different in certain way. So here, when we talk about comparison, we talk about the similarities in, in things that are similar to them and the, in the differences, right? Demonstrate how one subject is superior in some way to the other, right? For example, sometimes we want to demonstrate which one is better, 
which subject is better. Usually comparison is between two subjects, uh, two topics or two ideas or two people. So we demonstrate which one is better uh, than the other. Uh, we demonstrate how two subjects which appear dissimilar are actually similar, right? Um, so sometimes it's not necessarily to be judgmental. It may be informational. We just want to draw out uh, some information about some objects and we want to present that information in front of the world to know that what kind of subjects are these, right? So it's not always judgmental. We have to identify and clarify some misunderstandings about the particular objects and to provide a new way of doing or understanding something, right? State elaborates something that is unknown, okay? Support every claim with facts and accurate, reliable uh, resources, right? So this is the purpose of compare and contrast essay. So uh, when we are discussing something, we have to provide a certain proof we have to have a background to that information that we are providing. We have to do some research before putting that out in the paper, right? So we have to be accurate in, other info, in the information that we are providing uh, to be read by the readers, right? Let's move on to the next slide. So what is the criteria for comparison and contrast? How do we say these particular things can be compared and contrast, right? And what particular traits should be uh, uh, discussed? So it is important to note as you think about a compare and contrast essay, you should think about giving context and purpose for your comparison. And you do not want an essay that simply lists similarities and differences for no clear reason. So first of all, you should have a clear reason and clear objective behind writing something, right? So uh, you should have a purpose, a context, a background idea of comparison and contrast. For example, Okay, don't take example. We move further. When making comparison and contrast, it is important to be clear with the criteria you're using. Study the following example, which contrasts two people. Here, the criteria are unclear. So here we have an example. The example is Max is tall and strong. In contrast, Jacob is handsome and very intelligent. So can you? Uh, analyze this uh, I'll give you a moment to analyze this and we can discuss what is wrong with this sentence even though it's uh, it's a contrast right right and we have two people being contrasted in different ways so I'll give you a moment to think about what is wrong and unclear about this sentence and then we will move forward Yes. Any ideas why this sentence, even though it's a complete sentence, but there is something not right about this sentence. So yes, I have a response here. Different categories, it should be within the same classification, like tall and short, strong and weak. Perfect. Yes, anyone else who want to pull in? Yes, there is no relationship between categories. Even though we have used the transition part that is in contrast, even then it's not making any sense. And you're absolutely right. So degrees of adjectives are missing, yes. So, yes, I, I totally agree with what you have uh, analyzed and let's move forward and we will find out uh, what needs to be fixed. Okay, although the sentence has a contrast transition and that, but the cri criteria for, for contrasting are not the same. The criteria used for max are height and strength, right? That max is tall and strong. So we would expect similar criteria to be used for Jacob, right? 
Like maybe they would talk about Jacob as being short and weak, right? But we have new criteria, namely his appearance that is handsome and intelligence, right? So we have different qualities or adjectives being compared with each other, right? So this is a common mistake for students when writing this type of, type of paragraphs because um, they have uh, not a very clear criteria to compare in between two subjects. So they should have a clearer criteria when, are they, when they are contrasting or comparing something. For example, we have here, makeup, Max and Jacob differ in four ways. The first difference is height, Max is tall, while Jacob is short. It should be mentioned there that Max is tall, uh, but Jacob is short. A second difference is strength, Max is strong. In contrast, Jacob is weak, right? A third difference is appearance. Max, who is average looking guy, differs from Jacob, who is handsome. Okay, so the final difference is intelligence. So Max is of the average intelligence. Jacob, Jacob, on the other hand, is very intelligent. So this is how we should compare them, right? Uh, on the basis of their qualities, right? And the qualities ha should have the same criteria. They shouldn't be like random qualities picked up from a personality, but they should they should uh, carry the same meaning or same same context behind. Next, how do I prepare to write a comparison and contrast essay? So first of all, uh, you need to brainstorm about two subjects, right? Identify their qualities, how you can correlate them together in the same paragraph, same, same essay, right? And for brainstorming, you need to jot down your random ideas on a piece of paper. Maybe you can number them, you can create a Venn diagram, you can create a chart, right? Um, so you will identify the relevant points between the two subjects. Of course, we just did an example before when we talk about characteristics or traits or qualities, they should be relevant with each other. Next is establish a dominant idea. Like, where do you want to take the things? Uh, you have to establish an idea after examining points of similarities and dissimilarities or differences. This is the basis of comparison and trust, right? Maybe some, some, um, some, maybe some essays demand you to write pros and cons of some certain subjects. Some essays demand your preferences, right? Some essays demand what uh, is going on with the uh, characteristic of certain you know um, subjects and how do you classify them so you should do, uh, establish an idea before uh, you know writing an essay uh, you should work out on the plot of that particular essay select those traits to focus upon based upon the dominant idea right so whichever idea you want to support, you should select the traits to go with the dominant idea. Be sure these traits are subject to the purpose or desired accomplishment, right? So uh, when we talk about traits, that means qualities or characteristic of two objects that are going to be compared. And when we want to choose them, we want to match them with our desired out outcome or goal, right? So they should uh, be with the rhythm of the things that we want to accomplish. We should use proper use of, uh, we should have proper use of grammar. That means proper use of adjectives and, uh, you know, indicators. So uh, as you already know that <clears throat> uh, we, we have uh, a plot of a writing or essay. First of all, it's an introduction, then we have a body, and then we have a conclusion, right? So before starting, um, you jot down the ideas on a piece of paper, right? You brainstorm and you want to uh, take out all the possibilities of comparison and contrast between the given subjects, and you make a chart, right? So you will list the similarities and another of differences. If you are a visual person, um, uh, a diagram can facilitate this problem, right? So I'll, I'll tell you how to make that Venn diagram. So when you uh, are starting an essay, you mentioned the main topic, you, specific, uh, you use a specific subject to compare and contrast, 
then you give the thesis statements. Once you are done with the intro, you are ready to move on the body with paragraph, right? So we will discuss in detail about the thesis statement. Let's go further. Am I missing something? Sorry. Okay. So, how do I write a thesis statement for a comparison and contrast essay? Okay. Decide to what extent the similarities between subjects will be stressed and to what extent their differences will be stressed, right? So, uh, for example, if you are taking uh, qualities of a subject, let's say four qualities of subject A, you need to find out the same four qualities from subject B, right? So that will bring a balance in the essay. If you are taking only three qualities of subject A and you are talking about five qualities of subject B, that is not going to bring balance within the subject, within the essay, right? So you need to stress upon the, the qualities that you are choosing to describe, right? Create a thesis statement that reflects your decision. So first of all, uh, you will um, usually the, pre the thesis statement is in the introduction part. It's the last sentence of the introduction uh, and it describes what you are um, trying to identify. So <clears throat> first of all, you have to create a good sentence in the introduction with specific detail to the topic itself. So, uh, of course, you can't start writing about similarities and differences between two items out of the blue. That's why you should set out a sentence or two to mention specific topics you will compare under the central theme, right? And, of course, thesis, it marks the tone of the essay. It marks uh, the background of the essay. The last sentence or two of your paper, uh, last sentence of, of your introduction part, it specifies the thesis. So, of course, uh, it shouldn't be so long because of course you are going to describe everything later on in the body paragraphs, but your thesis should be concise and uh, to the point, okay? So the thesis of your comparison and contrast essay paper is very important. It can help you create a focused argument and give your reader a roadmap so she doesn't or he doesn't get lost in that point which you're, read, which you're trying to make. So uh, the usual place where readers are expected to find thesis statement in compare and contrast essay is the last sentence of the introduction. And of course, uh, it creates a background to the, a logical background to the upcoming you know, paragraphs. <clears throat> so, here we have examples of thesis statement. Have a look, go through these examples, and then we will discuss whether these examples are vague or they are clear. Are they ambiguous or are they clear to you? What do you get by reading these examples? So here I have given you three examples for the thesis statement, okay? Please read them through and you will find out what is clear or unclear about them. Are they good thesis examples or they are ambiguous or vague or unclear? So the first example is they are both somewhat alike and somewhat different. Number two is I can see similarities and some differences too. Number three, both of them involve only a single similarity or no differences. What is wrong here? Yeah, so you think, yeah, there is no criteria. 
the branch. Okay, I, it's just an example I have given you. Maybe that person is confused and I have just given you the example that he or she is mentioning only similarities or not differences, right? Uh, so three of them, can you get a, a smart idea from them or they are unclear? Yes, they are actually unclear. The writer is lost in the thesis statement. He or she, they are lost in their ideas and they can't, they can't describe what they want to do uh, in, in the introduction part. Okay, so these are weak thesis statement because they are unclear and the readers can't get the idea what the writer is trying to write, right? Okay, now we have examples of better thesis statement. Let's see. Now, have a look. Jada and Riyadh have differences, uh, have difference in geographical, sta uh, ge sorry, geographical statics, uh, statistics, but the culture and environment are similar. In order to make a decision between the online learning and on campus, consider the following criteria, level of efficiency, level of time consumption, and level of personal as well as intellectual development. Yes. So these are the better example of thesis statement where the writer knows what he or she wants to try to convey to the readers, right? Uh, So here the writer is depicting what special qualities he or she is going to mention and why he is comparing or contrasting these two particular subjects and what is the basic behind his idea of coming up with this topic, right? So it's not like a vague kind of thesis statement, but it's more clear it's concise and it gives a clear idea to the reader. Now, I'm giving you uh, an introduction uh, from, a, from an essay. It has the introduction and the thesis statement together. Please have a read and then we will move forward. I'm sorry. Sorry, sorry, why is it moving forward? Okay, this is the example. Before the advent of computers and modern technology, people communicating over long distance use traditional means such as letters and the telephone. Nowadays, we have a vast array of uh, communication tools which can complete this task, ranging from email to instant messaging and video calls, while the present and previous means of communication are similar in their general form, they differ in regard to their speed and the range of tools available. Now, here we have a good example of introduction with thesis statement, right? And it's setting up a, a background for the further writing where we are talking about while the present and previous means of communication are similar in their general form, they differ in regard to their speed and the range of tools available. Next slide. Body paragraphs. A total number of paragraphs in the body section depends on number of aspects or criteria you have to discuss. For example, if you have to make a comparison between two different events, through aspects, you will need two paragraphs. Three criteria require three paragraphs. So when, as we have done it already, when we are talking about different qualities, we talk about a proper numbering and you know uh, place in the, in the in the paragraph, right? For example, if we are talking about their physical appearance or their uh, you know relevance to the modern times, we need each paragraph. Uh, to define those similarities and differences, right? Uh, sometimes you will get the amount of aspect you use for comparison and contrast from your professor or a client, while in other instances, you will ha just have to determine the number yourself during the research process. 
when you get the title and aspects to compare, but without a certain number of criteria to cover similarities and differences, you have to brainstorm, take a blank piece of paper and write the first item in the left corner, the second item in the right corner and make a Venn diagram and start analyzing. Right. So uh, in the body paragraphs, you need to compare the, the different qualities of two subjects and you have to create a a uh, rough idea of how many um, the traits or characteristics you are going to touch and write them on the piece of paper so that you know these are similar aspects, these are different aspects so that it's easy for you when you're organizing them in a body paragraph. Let's see what is a Venn diagram. This is a Venn diagram, okay? So it might give you a big advantage when you're writing similarities and differences, right? Um, we have two objects. So you can use the circles for each of them and then where they are, they are meeting these, the meeting point, they have the similarities, right? So that means it should be compared. Uh, it, should be com uh, it should have a comparison and the differences should be uh, used in the contrast, okay? This is a Venn diagram. It's very useful to mark the similarities and differences between the two subjects. It's just a rough idea. So, <clears throat> It gives you a quick and efficient compare and contrast two or more ideas to make a Venn diagram, but simply draw some overlapping circle, one circle for each item uh, that you're considering. In the central area where they overlap, you will list the traits that are, that are common. And in the other in the part, other part of the diagram, you can make the list of things that are, that are those which are different. Now, next, part is organizing uh, a compare and contrast essay. The first key to writing a good compare and contrast essay is to organize it carefully. So there are two ways to do it. So we have two ways to do the organization of a compare and contrast that is point by point organization or altering method, alternating method and block organization. So let's have a look what is point by point uh, and what is block organization. So there are two main ways of structure a compare and contrast essay, namely using our uh, a block or point 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 structure. For the block structure, all of the information about one of the objects being compared or contrasted is given first. And all of the information about the other object is listed afterwards. I'll give you the examples in the coming slide. It will, it will be more picturistic and it will be easier to understand. Just have a good read of that. So when we talk about block method, uh, you use the, uh, you, you talk about one subject and discuss the next subject, right? You just usually write one paragraph discussing the first subject and then write a second paragraph discussing the second subject and so on, right? Um, for example, if you decide to uh, discuss the cost associated with taking an online course, you may emphasize that while a person is getting the same education, he or she is, should not be having the drive to go, to go to the college. In the next paragraph, you may discuss the cost associated with the per in-person course, right? So that means you are uh, separating two subjects in two or three or four different paragraphs and you are discussing them separately, right? This type of structure is similar to the block structure used for cause and effect and problem solution essay. For the point by point structure, each similarity or difference for one subject object is followed immediately by the similarities of, di uh, of the previous subject, right? The former is easier to write while the later is generally clearer as it ensures that similarities and differences are more explicit. Now, this is the pattern that we use for point by point uh, pattern, right? So in introduction, we introduce the main topic, we use the specific topic, subject items to compare, and we use thesis statement as we have already discussed. It's the same for, for both the, for both the you know, uh, organization details. So in paragraph one, for example, we take topic sentence. Point one, that means topic sentence. Subject one, details one, detail two. And subject two, detail one and detail two, right? We will do uh, an example later in the next slide. Uh, so here you can see in this structure, we are discussing two, uh, two subjects point-wise in each paragraph, 
okay they are the their characteristics are followed by each other whether they are differences or similarities okay then at the end we have conclusion we summarize the topic we state the significance of the subject and short evaluation of future development let's move on suppose you want to compare jobs okay this is the common most common type of essay that we we receive in in our writing career like you make a list of jobs and your favorite job and why you want to acquire them right so you will compare two job first make a list of factors that are important to you so salary opportunity for self development atmosphere atmosphere work hours level of interaction with people colleagues and each factor is a subtopic right so of course you can add up more if you want to it's just an example so when you want to compare two jobs or contrast two jobs you see certain factors right that are important to you then you probe more into that and you find out which one is more important for you which one is more useful to you right next now here sorry here we have a chart salary job a job b same or different so you will find whether this particular thing is same or different benefits vacation sick leave uh health insurance then next quality full time or part time work okay for example job a is part time right or maybe the timing is different it's not in the morning it's in the afternoon or in the evening and job b is full time and it's in the morning right working hours how many hours you are using atmosphere level of interaction with people right sometimes it's with adults sometimes it's with children I and mean, when we talk about you know doctors and when we talk about teachers right so uh, level of interaction with the people uh, it depends upon the age it depends upon their level of mentality opportunity opportunity for self development so this is a, a diagram this is an example you can use to uh, demonstrate the characteristics of two subjects and how they are working for you and whether they are same or different right now we have an example here okay so uh, this is the example of point by point by point organization and just have a look at this and you will find out how the ideas are following each other right let's have a good look The leap from high school to college is large one. Of course, this is the introduction part. Many students enter post-secondary education expecting the experience to be the same as the one they had, while at secondary uh, school, these students are wrong to make this assumption, and they very quickly realize just how difficult college is. College costs more, presents more academic challenges, and offers a more social environment than high school. First, now see the first body paragraph. First, in terms of cost, college is more expensive than high school because of tuition, living expenses, and books. Anyone who wishes to attend college must pay fees, whereas it is free to attend high school, right? So first, they are talking about the cost or expenditure upon the college and the school. College tuition can start at roughly $1,500 per term and can wind up costing as much as $2,000. The government funds high schools, so high school students don't have to pay for their education. Now, this is the first trait that they talked about. See, this is point by point. They are discussing both the subject in the same paragraph. In addition to tuition, tuition, college students must also worry about the residence or rental cost for living close to the college campus. In Toronto, rental costs for a basement apartment can range from $400 to $600 per month, not including utilities and residence fees at most college work out to roughly $2,000 per term. In contrast, high school residents have no living expense because the majority of high school live, students live at home with their parents for free. See, we have the, the, the traits or qualities or characteristics listed in the same paragraph. 
that are related to two subjects. So this is how point by point organization works. When we talk about block organization, as we have already discussed in, in the block organization, we uh, talk, uh, discuss one subject in per, uh, per paragraph, okay? So organization pattern is more effective when we use uh, on short essays, such as in-class essays, the body of such essays organized by discussing one subject, point by point in complete details before moving on to the next subject, right? So you're dividing two paragraphs in, on two subjects, okay? Not, they are not merged into one paragraph, but they are talked separately. The writer should select points by which both subjects can be examined. The number of the body paragraphs will be determined by the number of points discussed in the essay. So the other way of organizing a compare contrast essay is to arrange all the similarities together in one block and the differences in the other block. So you should discuss either the similarities first or you should discuss the differences first, right? So again, you are separating two categories, two subjects and uh, in different paragraphs. We do so by inserting transition paragraph or sentence between the two blocks. Now this is the organization of block pattern, see? Item A, point one, point two, point three. If they are discussed separately, two subjects or three subjects, they are discussed entirely in different, you know, uh, paragraphs. Item B and item C. So they, their qualities are discussed all together in different different uh, places. See, introduction and uh, conclusion, they remain the same, right? Uh, as we have discussed before, in, even in the point by point, we describe the topic, we mention the subjects, and we do the thesis statement. In conclusion, we summarize the topic, we state the value of the subject, and we propose suitable solution, we propose our analysis of the subjects, okay? For example, if you're talking about jobs, so first of all, you will talk about the similarities, as we discussed before, and then we talk about differences. So we will do them in different paragraphs, not in the same paragraphs, like we do in the point by point, okay? In point by point, we are going parallel, parallel you know, discussion. We are doing parallel discussion of two subjects in the same paragraphs, followed by each other's, you know, similarity or differences. But in block pattern, we uh, segregate them on the basis of their qualities. Now, here we have a sample of uh, block pattern. Uh, you have, in the first part, you have introduction. The black part is introduction. The green sentences, they are the thesis statement. Then we have body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and then we have a conclusion, right? So, for example, introductioning. Uh, they are uh, doing an introduction about, you know, vacationing in beach or in mountains, right? Vacationing at the beach or in the mountains and how it's good to be on the mountains or is it, it is better to be on the beach, right? So they will evaluate what are the qualities behind them and why they would choose a beach or a mountain for the vacation purpose, right? So let's read the thesis statement. Both places offer a variety of fun activities. The beach offers activity that the mountain cannot offer and vice versa. The mountain and the beach are totally different. The purpose of this essay is to contrast the climate, types of activities, and locations of the beaches and mountains. See, here they are giving a clear, in, clear you know, instruction for the reader. So, so what they are expected to read in the, in, the, in, the, in the essay further, right? So I'm going to discuss mountains first. The three aspects I'm going to discuss are climate, types of activities, and location. Climate is very important in order to enjoy vacations. If a person dislikes cold weather, he or she might have a hard time in the mountains. See here, they are discussing mountains first, then they are discussing beach in the second place. I'm going to discuss the beach second, okay? So, of course, they will talk about the same aspects he talked about mountains. So if he chose three qualities to be discussed about mountains, he will use the same three qualities to discuss about the beach, right? This is what we do when we write compare and contrast essay. We should compare and contrast them according to the same qualities and how they are different from each other, right? Now, in the simplified form, the block should look like this. 
and point by point should look like this. In block, introduction, object one, object one, point two, point three. Then we have transition sentence. Transition sentence, we will talk about them in the, in the coming slides. Then they, we discuss the points separately in the block method. In point by point, we talk them simultaneously. They follow each other in each paragraph. Point number one, object one, object two, object point two and point three, same. And then we have the conclusion. Now, the question is, should I use block or point by point arrangement? What do you think? What do you think is best when you write a short, a short essay? And what is best when you write a long essay? Sorry. I don't know why it keeps on popping, you know, the, the previous slide and the forward slide. Okay, so what do you think? What is best for smaller essay and what is best for longer essay? Any ideas? Okay, yes, me, you're right. Short essays are more preferably block method. Yes, because they're short and the reader can track what is happening in an essay. For example, if you're writing a six paragraph essay and if you're using a block method in six paragraph essay, you will lose your reader. Your reader will lost uh, interest in reading your essay because he or she will not figure out what the writer is trying to say, right? And Salim, Salim, he's saying, uh, I think for better, uh, for long, better to use point by point. Yes, you are absolutely right. For longer essays, we need to keep a track where we are taking the essay, in which direction, right? So that our reader is not lost or our reader is interested in reading more. So block treats all of the elements of each subject separately, point by point treat each element with respect to each subject sub uh, uh, sequentially. If the comparison is short, a paragraph or two, then the block method is fine. Alternative is used for longer comparison. There is a risk that a block essay will sound like two separate essays uh, that are weakly connected with the translation paragraph or a sentence. So you were absolutely right. Block can be used for shorter essays. Point by point can be used for lower essays. Yes, next slide. What are the rules of thumb with comparison contrast essay? So, <clears throat> okay, the rule of thumbs, be sure to discuss both subjects equally in terms, of, uh, in terms of coverage. As we have discussed earlier, that whatever we are doing, there should be a balance. There should be a balance between the content that we are trying to give in to the readers. For example, if we talk about two qualities of a certain subject, we will talk about the same two qualities about the other subject, okay? It's not like random qualities, no. They should be coherent and connected uh, on the level of, um, they should be coherent and connected, right? For example, <clears throat> let's see, we'll talk about the example later. Be sure to discuss the same element for each subject and do not discuss one element for one subject and not do so for the other. Decide either upon block or alternative uh, arrangement and do not mix. This is what is, this is very important, right? You should be focused on what kind of uh, uh, organization you are going to use, either it's block or point by point. Don't mix them up, right? And don't focus on one subject more and the other subject less. If you're focusing on one subject more, that will make your essay imbalanced or imperfect and it will give a biased view of the writer towards two subjects, so it should be balanced. Have a clearer purpose to achieve in compare and contrast essay, okay? So what you want to do by writing an essay, do you want to justify one subject? Do you want to compare them in order to give your choice, like which one is better, which one is less better? 
Do you want to give the information to the people, to the reader? What do you want to do with those essays? <clears throat> now, let's talk about indicators and signal or transition words. These are very important and very easy. Comparison and contrast signals, indicators, or transition words are the key to writing a successful compare and contrast is the use of appropriate signal words. These are the words that are used to introduce point of comparison and contrast, and it is not, oh, sorry, it is not sufficient simply to describe the items you are comparing, but you must refer back and forth to enhance and relate the point of similarities and differences. For example, here we have an example. Job A is a full-time job, whereas job B is part-time. See, here we have whereas, it's, it's an indicator or a transition word or a signal, right? That means we are shifting to, not, to another subject. First we talk about first subject, then we shift to another subject, so we use indicators. Um, of course, we use first, second, another, lately, in conclusion, the final EDC. But the main purpose of this is to have a transition from one subject to another subject. Why do you need to use indicators? Yes. Why do we need to use indicators? Do you have any idea? We just discussed. Actually, we, use, we need indicators to talk about two subjects in the same pattern and to have a transition. Yes, you're right, to organize our points, right? Not to mix them up, yes, to make the difference clear. Yes, you're right, whether we are going to differentiate them or we are going to bring up, uh, out the similarities between them, right? When we say similarly, that means we want to talk, to talk about the similar aspect of the other subject. And when we say, whereas, or on the other hand, that means we are going to talk about the difference, right? So we want to organize the ideas, we want to make the difference clear, and of course we want to give them an idea whether the quality is different or similar, okay? Uh, good comparison or contrast essay features the use of indicator words to convey to the reader at any moment whether compares or comparison or contrast is being made and the nature of it. Example of indicator are to compare. See, we have also as in the same way, like, likewise, similarly, comparable, equally, or in addition. So now you know when we compare two subjects to objects, we talk about their similarities, right? When we want to make a contrast, we use although, but, even though, however, on the other hand, otherwise, yet, still, conversely, different from, whereas, as opposed to, right? So here we have the indicators to express what we are going to mention about those two subjects, either it's comparison or a contrast. Right? And of course, we are organizing them. Now, I'll give you two examples of compare and contrast. Please have a good read of uh, those two examples and we will move forward after that. Um, when you read these examples, please notify which one are the indicators here, okay? So you can simply write them in the chat box. I hope you have uh, have a good read. Um, yes. 
So here we have similarly, likewise, both, just like, yes, you're right. Now I have an example of contrast. So please have a look and tell me which indicators are used here. Computers, although increasingly small, are not always easy to carry from one place to another. However, the mobile phone can be carried with ease. Computers are generally not very portable, whereas the mobile phone is computer. Mobile phone is. Computers differ from mobile phones in their lack of portability. Computers are unlike mobile phones in their lack of portability. Okay. Which contrast indicators are here? However, where is unlike, although, however, differ? Yes. So, what do you think? These samples are they point by point or are they block organization? What do you think? Are these samples point by point or block? When we talk about point by point, we give the, the traits in, uh, in, you know, in sequence, right? It is point by point, actually, because we are talking about computers and mobiles, right? And we are comparing, their, uh, comparing and contrasting their traits or qualities side by side, right? In one sentence or in next sentence, they are uh, drawn by the indicators, right? So that means it is a point by point. Uh, composition. Thank you for pulling in your ideas. Next slide. Now, yeah, these are the answers. So you were all right. Uh, here we have the indicators in the block writing. Similarly, likewise, both and just like is similar to. However, whereas differ from are unlike. So these are all. Um, indicators or signals or transition words or transition phrases, okay? So here we have, uh, sorry. now we have an example here. So what do you think? Uh, have a read and tell me whether it is compare or contrast. One, similarities one similarity between current and previous methods of communication relates to the form of communication. In the past, both written forms, such as letters, were frequently used in addition to oral forms, such as telephone calls. Similarly, people nowadays use both of these forms just as in the past. Written forms of communication are prevalent for example, via email and text messaging. In addition, all the forms are still used, including the telephone, mobile phone, voice messages, uh, via instant messaging service. What do you think? Is it a compare paragraph or a contrast paragraph? Yes, it is a compare paragraph. Because how do you know they are compare paragraph? How do you analyze this is a pen compare paragraph? Yeah, it points out uh, the similarity. Good, thank you. Yes, it talks about between the current and previous modes of communication, but at the same time, it talks about the similarities between the two, you know, mediums. Yes, it is a compare paragraph. <clears throat> so, when you talk about the conclu conclusion, any end of the essay, 
as we discussed earlier, we have three parts of the essay, introduction, then we have body paragraphs, and then we have conclusion. In conclusion, what do we do? We talk about the summary of the main points, we evaluate them, and we bring out the significance between that comparison and contrast. At this point, you have the introduction and body paragraphs, which indicates you are ready to conclude an essay, right? Generally, this is the easiest part. Yes, you're right, Abrar. We recommend, uh, in conclusion, we recommend our own analysis, our own uh, you know, understanding of two subjects and our own inclination or maybe the information that we want to pass on to the readers, we suggest that information. Okay. At this point, you have the introduction and body paragraph, which indicates you are ready to conclude the essay. Generally, this is the easiest part, but you should ensure that it's properly structured as well. Here is what your conclusion should contain. Conclusion should contain Summary of the main point, right? So at the very beginning of this part, you should summarize the main points you have made through the essay. It's important to synthesize your thesis with, a, with info in the body paragraphs, okay? So whatever arguments you were making in the body paragraphs, you will summarize those arguments like in shorter form in this part. Evaluate. You will provide an analysis of what you discussed in the paper or mention possible solution. The approach depends on the nature of your subject, right? But for example, uh, of course, there are some some topics where you want to analyze which one is better, which one is not better, which one is easier, which one is difficult, which one is preferable, which one is not preferable. But sometimes you want to just analyze two things and just to give an information to the readers, right? So uh, here in the last part, you evaluate. And you give your own opinion, right? You're right, Abrar, thank you so much. You give your own opinion that what you think of the topic. And significance, not only do you have to clarify the importance of the main topic, but also mention the significance of comparisons or contrasts. How to do this? It is not that difficult to answer. Now, what was my goal in showing similarities and differences between these items? Your response indicates their significance. Yani, again, the background, why you compare and contrast two things? What was your purpose behind that? What you want to, what you wanted to make a point about? What was going in the background in your uh, head? Like if you're comparing two personalities, two books, two places, two cities, why you compared them in the first place? Like if you're talking about your own inclination, if you are talking about your own judgment, if you're talking about your own preferences, you will mention that. But if you want to just give a statement about two different objects or subjects, so it's up to you what you want to make the, the, the point at the end. Example, now here is it's an example. Um, <clears throat> this is an example from uh, an essay that I downloaded from the, uh, from the internet, I gave you the body paragraphs in the in the as an example before so this is the conclusion part so see in conclusion methods of communication have greatly advanced over the past 50 years while there are some similarities as the form of communication there are significant differences chiefly in relation to the speed of communication and the range of communication tools available there is no doubt that technology will continue to progress in future and the advanced tools which we use today may one day also become outdated. Now, with this conclusion, what idea you received here? Is it a pro and con kind of exam uh, example? Is it uh, your likeness or your, your, like, your like or dislike kinds of example? Or is it just the information? What kind of Conclusion is this, what do you receive from here? Yes, after reading this uh, conclusion, what do you get as an idea of the writer? Is he or she want to make a point between which one is better or 
a point what he likes or he doesn't like, a point about pros or cons, a point about just information. What is being imparted here? Any ideas? See, in this one over the sides on one over the other. Yes, yes, Mini saying the writer is talking about his sides on one over the other. Yes, anyone who wants to say something? Okay, so here. We are talking about, the writer is talking about just the information, right? And he is just in that. Because in past, scientific development was different. In future, it will be different. Now it's something else. So things are changing with the passage of time. So here, in this example, Allah, he, will be different. It will be difficult, Allah. In yes. <laughs> okay. Somebody's saying it's difficult. Yes, it is difficult. But you know, there are levels of writing and there are level of, you know, uh, you know, level of learning and level of attitudes that people are following. Of course, in foundation year, it's different in higher, like, you know, a bachelor's in, you know, postgraduate and pre-graduate, it's different, right? So we are just talking about, you know, the information here. The writer is trying to make a point that things change with the passage of time, right? Now, we have an example of a small essay here. Please have a look at this. And here, you will tell me what is going on here, okay? Uh, of course, it's about phones, our favorite, iPhone 5S versus iPhone 6. The company's announcement of a new product collects millions of views, people stand lines, uh, in front of Apple stores to get a new gadget just to come at the same place tw 12 months later. Logging for a new product. Among the company's recent novelties in the iPhone 6, a newer and more advanced version of the most popular phone in the world. However, the previous model iPhone R5 seems to have been satisfying people's needs fine as well. So what is the difference? Now they are trying to find out the difference between iPhones and why they are different. So here we have point by point organization as it's evident, right? It's not a blog organization, right? So see, we are talking about two iPhones simultaneously. They are following each other in their, in their qualities, right? Here you can see I have underlined the the differences, right? They are talking about how they are differentiated with the use of however newer, more advanced, right? Bigger and wider compared to larger, right? Both, see here we have uh, indicators as well as proper adjectives to be used to describe something is different from the other, right? Or maybe something is similar with the other subject. So in post writing stage, you finish writing the paper, but your work isn't over yet. Before sending or submitting the essay, it's needed to proofread and edit the paper to eliminate all mistakes and unwanted parts. Once you have finished your essay several times to check spelling, grammar, punctuation, make sure of use of uh, spell check and grammar check tools in your word processing program if possible you can get a friend or maybe a teacher to have a look have a review of your paper uh, if, if you need to edit it you may need to make a review on this uh, so it's good if you follow this post writing stage to avoid any kind of mistakes uh, in terms of you know information in terms of spelling and grammar so this is the stage you should always follow. You must have a proofread of your writing before submitting it to your teacher or maybe some paper or journal or whatever you're writing for. 
key takeaways. A compare and contrast analysis two subjects by either comparing them, contrasting them, or both. Now, at the end of the today's uh, presentation, what we got from today's prisoner workshop, we workshop that we talk about when we are analyzing two subjects, we are either comparing them and contrasting them, or both. We are either finding out their similarities or differences, or we can talk about both of them. The purpose of writing a comparison or contrast is not to state the obvious, but rather to eliminate subtle differences or unexpected similarities between two subjects, right? Thesis should clearly state the subjects that are to be compared, contrasted, or both, and it should state what is to be learned from doing so. There are two main organizing strategies for compare and contrast essay, organizing by subject themselves, one than the other, organizing by individual points in which you discuss each subject in relation to each point. Yani number one, block organization. Number two, point by point. Use phrases of comparison or phrases of contrast to signal to the readers how exactly the two subjects are being analyzed. So at the end, we are talking about transition words or indicators or transition signals or phrases that tells you how two subjects are analyzed how they are similar and how they are different okay now these are the references i checked in through internet is an amazing place so you can find anything you want to if you're looking for and thank you so much at the end so nice of you you have attended and i i'm so grateful that you're here until the end so if you have any question or any comment is your welcome. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Rabia, for this wonderful and informative presentation. We really enjoyed the information that you presented, which is very important for all of us, especially for our grad and undergrad students. All right. So now I will share the links with you, the evaluation form and the YouTube channel. So please, uh, uh, complete the evaluation form and uh, if you have any questions or comments please uh, you can just raise your hand or and open your mic or you can just post it in the chat and thank you all for attending the this presentation this workshop and thank you mrs rabia thank you so much for having me thank you everyone for your patience for being here <laughs> thank you so much we and it means a lot we appreciate it yes and it was a very good audience actually i got a good response from them all right so, so any anyone any questions or comments that you would like to add uh my email i i gave in the beginning in the first slide so if you want my email i can write it in the chat box yeah. You can email me anytime with your reference. Any questions or comments? You're more than welcome. Thank you very much. Everybody's writing. Thanks so much. I, I want to thank you. If you have any comments, please go ahead and share. And if you have any uh, any question, you are uh, more than welcome to ask. You can email me. We can ask here. Thank you. I want to everyone.
since there are no questions here. All right, so since we don't have uh, questions or comments, so thank you again. Thank you, Mrs. Rabia, and thank you all for attending our today's workshop. And we'll see you, inshallah, uh, next week. Please don't forget to complete the form here and subscribe in, your, our, in our, uh, our YouTube channel. So we hope we see you, inshallah, next week with our uh, next workshop, I guess, which is going to be about, uh, just let me double check, cause and effect is safe. So I hope we see you, inshallah, next week. Thank you all. We'll see you, inshallah, uh, next week. Enjoy the rest of your night.